temple. So we're going to see something really metal in a second, so get ready for that. It's explaining it to you here, but like... Stench of blood. What's that smell? Not really explained what her giant Durgan in the corner is doing, but she's just hanging out with him. It's kind of Cthulhu-esque, just go with it. Just supposed to know, I fucking guess. Blood rain. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I really don't like a creepy dragon. Bye bye water. Hello blood. This will have terrible ramifications for the ecosystem. Now we fight red demons because the blood. Fun fact that I found out recently. Not through practical means, just through theory. Uh, you you can't drink human blood, so sorry, everyone. <laughs> can't drink human blood, there's simply too much iron in human blood, so if you drink any amount of human blood it will give you poisoning. Iron poisoning. So yeah, that whole like, I will drink people's blood and vampirism unfortunately is like, just not realistic, which is a shame. I'm pretty sure you can still bathe in their blood, but like... I don't know if it actually has any health benefits, so, you know, and getting all that blood, I mean, it's just a problem. Like, how many, how much, like, do you think one human's worth of blood is enough to fill up a bathtub? You know, they say bathe in the blood of your enemies. You really need to have more than one enemy to do that. Like, and you really need to get all of that blood out like a sponge. Now I know the shit down those places that I would just will run around, but it's like it's a fucking box. Just give me a break. If you want all secrets, I can do all secrets later. Or you know you could just play the game. <laughs> this is a good game, you should just play the game. It's fun. Look, another box. Oh no, what would I have done? Fallen down and got this box instead. Oh, I really needed those healing orbs. And this herb. Like, if I was playing on a harder difficulty, of course I'd go get that shit, but like, I'm playing on. Oh. <laughs> I can't do platforming. Where? So yeah, I've been listening to a lot of like true crime podcasts lately and it's like officially warped my mind a lot because now I'm sat here like I was listening to one that's just about faking your own death and people who have successfully got other way with it and it was later found out and like a lot of people is just like they went missing. Uh, and they were never found, and like, a uh, disturbingly high amount of homicides or disappearances just go unaccounted for. Like, more than you would feel comfortable knowing about, like, the police obviously are just like, oh yeah, yeah, we get most of them, don't you worry, like, and then you listen to murder podcasts, uh, like, serial killers podcasts, and it's like, the only reason he was caught was because he was publicly masturbating. And you're like, are you fucking serious? There was a guy in Australia who, like, killed and raped, like, several women, like, over, like, a 30-year period. And the only reason he was caught was because he couldn't stop himself from jacking off in his car outside of, an, uh, of a shop where a lady saw him and he got arrested for being indecently exposed. And they were like, hey, these fingerprints look familiar. 
and it's like, yeah, you know, you know the police aren't exactly all Columbo, <laughs> and you know, it's actually quite hilarious how fucking bad they are at that job, but it's like, at the same time, when they have such limitations, like, they can't exactly just sh go into your house and go, it was you, I can tell because of the circumstantial evidence, like, it's really hard, you have to prove, you have to have a proper case and feel like, <laughs> yeah, two is in the drops. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> pretty entertaining, especially the whole faking your death thing. Uh, yeah, there's some real fun ones. If you if you're interested in that stuff, it is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Lol, I got got wrecked. And that guy dead. This this blade is good. At high level, it's good. Once you fully leveled it up, I see him. Do you see him, Spider Man? Mushroom. Dick. Now he doesn't have a health bar and it's pretty easy. Oh yeah, I already got that thing. Oh, more of these demons. So yeah, the most common thing of people faking their death is they go out swimming, and they go out swimming on their own, apparently, and then they go missing at sea, and what actually happened was they swam a very long distance to a boat that was waiting for them, and then they just get a change of clothes, and then just sail with their friends to another country. And you'd be amazed how many times before passports were really a thing that happened and it was just like super easy for people to fucking do that. There was a story about a lady who was just sick of her husband, found a new lover, and they just ran away to New Zealand by her literally going swimming at the beach, swimming around an island while no one was looking and then getting on her new uh, boyfriend's boat and then sailing. <laughs> sailing away and eventually ending up in New Zealand. <laughs> and it's like, wow. Damn it with the dick monsters all the time. Oh my god, stop doing this. Also, I forgot that this floor does a little bit of acid damage the whole time you're standing in it, and I'm just like standing in it because it, it isn't doing enough damage. For me to worry about it right now, so I'm just like, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna kill everything and then exit this area and get my health bar back in the Oh great, I'm glad you respawned in exactly the same place to do this shit again. So yeah, like, um, not that I'm considering faking my own death, but it's fascinating hearing people's stories about this. I was reading about someone talking about, like, from a writing perspective, I mean, it's very interesting, because it's like, well, you know, and it's, it's an interesting thought experiment. What would I do? How would I get away with faking my own death? And it's like, you need to do a lot of stuff. You need to do a lot of stuff, but like, all that I've learned is people don't check documents as much as you would like to think they do. Uh, people aren't very good at detecting forgeries if it's more convenient for them to look the other way, which a lot of the time it's more convenient for them to look the other way. 
um, and it's much more hassle for them to be like dealing with it properly. Unless they're like literally border control all the visa people, they don't give a shit. So, you know, and the, it, I have applied for multiple visas in my life, and the thorough look that they give is, and China is really strict. They'll go over all of your documents and then still not notice a forgery. Not that I've done it, but I've known a lot of people who have done it, and they just scan your print out of your document and go. Yeah, okay, that looks normal. You can sit there and change the dates on everything, they don't fucking care, change the name on everything, they don't fucking care. And you're thinking, like, in countries where they will willingly take, take bribes instead, or just be like, whatever, I don't care, and let you work there illegally, you're sat there thinking, like, you can be fucking anybody in these countries and just get away with it. So if you're ever sat there like, I need to flee my country, and I can speak English well, enough you can just move to countries like vietnam and they will just like go okay i guess and then if they catch you you pay a fine that is cheaper than the application for the visa to start with then they give you a visa <laughs> like don't 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 work illegally if you can avoid it but i'm just saying if you were to flee your country you could, it's pretty fucking easy actually My favorite one was uh, someone who was writing, was talking about is there anything stopping somebody from just in a way of faking their own death, right? Like, you, re you can regenerate blood, right? Everyone knows this. Your blood regenerates over time. Like, that's why you can give blood and donate blood all the time, basically. But not all the time, but like, you know, fairly regularly. And that's why they always send me emails because I donated blood once in the UK and they're like hey we know you've got that blood can we have more I forgot to press this button but like it just brings a cage down with goodies in by which I mean it will have one hub or a book that I won't read yeah and one person pointed out is there anything stopping you from just drawing your own blood other than you can't do this particularly well without damaging or infecting yourself. Is there anything, if you are physically capable, stopping you of drawing your own blood, keeping it in a blood bag in your fridge or some shit, and then just spraying it all over your apartment and disappearing? Because it's your blood, right? Like, it, you, can, it's, you can identify it, they can identify it as yours, potentially. And go, it's the same blood type as he was, something strange happened here, and then you can just disappear. But yeah, it's much harder than fuck. But like, it's not impossible. People act like it's impossible nowadays in the day or in the age of like uh, mobile technology stalking and like cameras. And, uh, I'm sure if you try hard enough, you can do a really good job of disappearing. But like, it's a lot of risk. Better off just doing shit than it. <laughs> Which is the whole point, right? That's it. Just has to be hard enough that it's like <laughs> hard enough that it, you, you won't just do it on a whim. Because if everyone did it on a whim, it would be fucking hell <laughs> for like the average person in government to work out who you were. <laughs> but yeah, you hear about it all the time. One of my friends, who was an English teacher, he was an American. He was working in Peru. He said, the amount of people who are in Peru are Americans who have just run away from the law in the USA, from lawyers, from divorces, from their ex-wives and girlfriends, from pregnancies, from debt, from the mob, and are just like, you know what, fuck it, I am now just going to go somewhere where no one looks for me, Peru, and work at this illegal ass fucking school until the heat dies down. Yeah, that shit happens all the time. It's the easiest way to get away from something because, like, you know, it's much harder for them to find you and much more... a, a lot more conversing with other countries who they might not have a great relationship with and spending a lot of money trying to get you back into their country to deal with the legal proceedings. 
which is exactly what happened recently with the ESL lockdown over here. So to date this video horribly, um, in China they shut down all of the private ESL training centers because they think they don't need them anymore and they think that they're like a pretty fr fucked up and corrupt industry or like they're costing Chinese people too much money. You know, fuck the foreigners who are being exploited. It's like, oh no, the noble Chinese are being like exploited for money. We can't have that. It's their job to scam us, not the other way around. So, um, <laughs> they shut down a major company that was worth millions, and the CEO just took all of his money out of the out of China, ran away and went back to his home country and China can't do anything about it because he just went back to his home country and they were like, well, if he ever comes back and it's like, he's never gonna fucking come back. He shut down his business and he took all of his money, refused to pay all of his staff and just went home. He didn't pay any tax or anything because uh, the, way, the way Chinese law is, they seem to think that foreigners aren't allowed property or money and won't allow you to take your own profits outside of the country unless you sneak it out. And he snuck out 600 million renminbi, which is about the same amount of roughly about just over 60 million pounds or something like that. <laughs> and he was just like, fuck you, I'm good. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like, it's... Like, well, what do you expect? And it's like, that really hammers home a point of like, you can be at that high profile of a criminal where you literally just took all of this money out of the country illegally and went back to your home country with it all and they can't do shit because <laughs> it's his money and he's in his home country. They could do shit while he was in the country and he left before they could detect that he'd left. Because <laughs> he's so rich, he could just find ways to get it out. He probably took a private plane, stuffed the plane full of cash, and just flew it out of the country. And they were like, oh, no, whatever, and he just paid bribes to whoever to look the other way and not search the plane. So, yeah, like, you think, if you're not important... Ooh, temple. See what I mean about a lot of these areas being kind of grey? It's got different lighting indoors. Yo! Let's go to the temple rave! <laughs> yeah! Sick! Oh, I see why they're cheering. God damn it. <laughs> Yo, this party's lit. There's one naked girl and there's a bunch of demon dudes hammering on drums. Oh, and Guy Fieri's here. What is this Lollapalooza? <laughs> Why are the demons just stood around now holding, like, tridents and shit? Hi, infernal priest Dagradai. Glorious Lord of Darkness. They don't come across as organized or tool-using animals. Demon statue. Endowed with life and power once again. Mm. He's like, yo. It fits right in my hand. Proof Yet of creative <laughs> creative design. Can you not sense it? It is the eve of the arrival of the almighty Archfiend. And all the souls gathered in this place stand ready to be joined as one. Uh, souls? I thought they were demon. The dragon lineage swaggers about, polluting our ritual with his foul stench. And you again, stinky blood. And, and he swaggers about. Yeah, you know, Reeves known for his swag. We have accomplished that which we came here to I'm really confused why Elizabeth needed to get more naked for this scene. Because it's really just this scene. As you command. Yeah, and it's revealed here, like, holy shit, she's the final fiend. 
it's like, well, yeah, I guess, like, whatever. I need to care more for me. <laughs> so yeah, it really ha that kind of shit really hammers home uh, how little can happen really to some of these people if they just leave the country. So it really makes you think, <clears throat> like, how hard could it be <laughs> to fake your own death and reappear in another country? I mean, probably much harder now because of the travel ban, but you know what I mean, like, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend trying it, though. <laughs> I'm just thinking in my crazy brain. So I always thought faking my own... I've always thought faking your death was, like, really fucking crazy and cool and stuff they do in thriller books and shit, and then I was just like, yeah, but the reality is, like, it's actually much harder to do that shit. And you have to cut yourself off from everyone you've ever known. It's, it's, you need to know some really good people who are really capable of making fake IDs, you know? And if you're caught, holy shit, you're in so much trouble. I'll tell you one more story that's along these lines. I knew a guy who said his brother was working in Australia. And he didn't really explain what he was doing in Australia, something to do with his like uni major or something. I don't, I don't know what it was, it's something like engineering or accountancy or something. Completely different from teaching. Um, and he was working in Australia for quite a long time, but got into a load of debt. Uh, I took a big old loan out from the bank, uh, like took loads of money out from the bank and still had it and then like was but was not doing well for himself and he decided, fuck it, I'm just gonna go live in New Zealand. And um, the guy just didn't tell the bank <clears throat> he was leaving. And then he met a New Zealand girl and ended up becoming a permanent New Zealand resident and just never went back to Australia and never went back to the UK where he's from and just went fuck it like I'm not gonna tell them because Australia was such a bust I'm never going back to Australia and they'll just have to fucking deal with me never paying back that loan that I literally just took with me all of the money and spent it in New Zealand and as far as I'm aware they never caught up with him and Australia and New Zealand are pretty close, and they often share the same banks. <laughs> so, yeah, he literally was a UK migrant, he was in Australia for a few years, he borrowed a fuck ton of money, took the money, and went to New Zealand. And no one caught up with him ever, and said, Yo dude, you owe us like, thousands of dollars. Now, I don't still know the guy whose brother it is, so I'll never find out if they ever caught up with him, but I feel like eventually they would catch up with him, right? You'd like to think. But it really makes you think, doesn't it? It really makes you think. Before I leave a country, should I just take out a huge fuck off loan and then just leave the country with the money? Like, and never come back. And there's really nothing stopping you from trying that shit except for, like, your morals. Like, you know, you could just go into a bank, take out a huge loan, and then go, lol. And just run away with the money and disappear into a country where they don't have any good relationship with that country and they don't, there's no record of you going there. Or like whatever. Like it's really easy to shake that kind of stuff because you just take a flight from that country to that country, a different country. And then from country A you go somewhere else to another country and by that point they've lost the trail of you. <laughs> You know, like you take a plane from one place, then take a bus over the border to another place, and then you're just fucking gone after that, like, change a few more borders, and yeah. It's really crazy. Why am I thinking about this? <laughs> he just clipped through the floor. 
Oh. Box. 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 Oh. I don't really need that. The enemies aren't hard enough for me to need this shit. Ooh, a book. The Prayer of the Necromantale. Necromantale? Yeah, it's just like, lol, I'm super edgy. Ah, uh, get me. Okay, we're here now. Everyone's gone home. Party's over. Damn, I'm late. Oh. <laughs> There's a naked blood chick. You will find no one here. They await the arrival of the almighty Archfiend in the land of his rebirth. And where might that be? <laughs> that is of no concern to you, Dragon <laughs> Elizabeth is one of the only people bright enough not to tell the protagonist where to go after she dies. You look at my wavy... Elizabeth! Ruler of blood! Queen of the greater fiends! Oh, good for you. Seriously, the butterfly motif for every chick in this game has to stop. Okay, it's not every chick, but it's like, it's more than one. <laughs> Ow, loud sound effect. Yeah, I don't like fighting Elizabeth. She's she's not hard she's just not fun you know because there's a lot of dive kicking and hitting you with her tail and then it, that's basically it see once you get her you get her and you do a lot of damage but sometimes you try and get her and it just doesn't home properly and it feels like nah uh, uh. like that shit i went straight for her and it didn't count she does that shit a lot I feel like that's pretty much all of her moves. She does a blood magic thing, this, which is kind of annoying, but it's again. Basically wait for her to tail strike, then swan, swallow, dive, her, uh, whatever, you know, the dive strike is. Art of the flying swallow. Ow, oh, it didn't work now. Stop it, Spammy Jackson. I can spam too. Stop it. See, you just do a lot of damage. She's not particularly hard. I know it's easy mode, but like, you know, cut me a break. You see, she really likes that move. Oh, a new move. I didn't want to press that button. I don't want to finish it a lame way, but it, she dodged it anyway. Ah, I see how that move works now. Nearly dead. Nearly dead. Plus. Okay. Yeah. All dead. Swirlied. I will not die. The greater fiends are eternal. <laughs> oh. She just kind of died in the lamest. She got flushed. So, Dragon Ninja, would you like to know where the Archfiend will be reborn? I'm glad someone's dumb enough to tell me. <laughs> place that has bound our clan since time immemorial. More precisely, the peak of Mount Fuji. Mount How? Fuji. Indeed. The sacred peak <laughs> that casts a shadow over your village is also where you shall die. <laughs> Can you lift to give me a lift there, bro? Ryu. How are you here? Sonia, you cannot follow me. <laughs> Stop following me. Wait. I love you. My path leads through the land of the dead.
Oh. That was a bit like, she was like, wait. And I thought she was going to say something dumb, but then he was just like, I'm, I'm going to go into the underworld by. <laughs> wait for it. Yeah. 